we're here in my favorite place to freaking be. This is my sanctuary, my home pole dance studio. If you're new to pole dance and you're trying to maybe go to your local studio and learn a few things and then go home and you're like, man, I wish I could practice in the in-between times. You know, if you're taking classes twice a week, maybe you want to practice somewhere in between those two times that you go to the studio so that you can improve better. This is a great idea and I will be giving you some tips to keep in mind if you're a beginner uh, setting up your pole, what it is that you need to keep in mind, as well as some tips as to what to do if you're ready to take this to the next level and make things a little bit more permanent in your own home. Uh, please keep watching, let's dive right in. Okay, so my pole setup story begins here with this nerdy guy with Russian literature and Franz Kafka tattoos. <laughs> that is my current husband, but at that time he was only my boyfriend and that was his apartment. Check out those ancient ass floors. Okay, anyway, here he is helping me unbox my very first pole. I was so excited when I got this pole and I want to stop here and talk about the pole that I got really quick. I got the 45 uh, millimeter, is that how they measure it? Millimeter, oh God, yes, millimeter pole. And uh, it's rather thin compared to the pole that I first started dancing on. The, first, the pole that I first started dancing on was the 50. That thing was so fat. Um, I do not like the, the, the girth of that pole. I prefer a much thinner pole, so the 45 uh, was very nice to transition to. I wanna tell you, folks, if you are buying your first pole, and you're trying to set up a little pole space at home, do not, do not buy a cheaper pole just because it's cheaper. If you've managed to find a very good quality pole at a good price or maybe a used pole that is in great condition, at it, go for it, that's fine. Just make sure that whatever pole you get is legit and has a good reputation. I can't, I can't tell you how scary it is uh, to be on a pole that is not sturdy, not stable. Uh, you really want something that is, is, is going to take care of you. You don't want to be falling off this pole. Obviously you can get a good pole, install it incorrectly and you can still have a disaster happen, but really um, spend the money now on the pole, uh, especially X pole. I can't really speak for other poles. I've only had this one pole and that's what I'm trying to tell you. If you spend the money now to get the right pole, this is, a, this is your main piece, okay? This is something that you can carry with you to other places wherever you move. This pole, what I love about it is that they sell separate extensions. So let's say you are like me where you started off in an apartment and the ceiling height was very little. And then later on, fast forward a few years, you get your own place and your, your ceiling height is higher. You definitely want uh, something uh, that is going to last you. In my case, I was able to buy the extension pieces and boom, I have no, I didn't have to go and buy a new pole. And this is a solid brand X pole. I highly recommend it. I know Loop It Pole is another brand that is uh, highly recommended. There are, I'm sure there are very good ones out there. Just make sure you do your research and spend the money on a good pole. This is not something that you want to just save some money on and get a rinky dinky knockoff. Don't do it. You heard it here. So after unboxing and some talking too, I was able to convince uh, my boyfriend to move his bed out of his bedroom and into his living room. So now <laughs> this bedroom was in the living room and his bedroom was empty and I was able to set up my pole there. And here you see me kind of going for my first little spin. So my first setup, as you can see, I didn't have much space around me, okay? I couldn't really go ape shit and just like do as many, no. But then again, I was a beginner. I was learning very basic things. And so having a smaller space, a little bit less uh, room was okay. It was okay because I was a beginner. I was just learning the basics. So if you're just starting out and you're like, I don't have that much space, you can probably make some space. You don't need that much, especially if you're just starting out. You can just go home and practice in a little corner of the house or the apartment that you're at, and it'll be okay, and you can still have successful practices. Tile floor is okay for now. Deal with it. I had to deal with it for, for quite some time before I was able to get nicer flooring, okay? Uh, I understand that when you're in an apartment, you can't just modify the floors of the apartment, especially if you pay rent and it doesn't belong to you. <laughs> yeah. If you are dancing on the tile floor, one thing I do recommend is getting a crash mat. 
please, this is for your safety. If you're already like a little bit past beginner and you're starting to do some, you know, intermediate climbs and some tricks and inverts and you're upside down, you're learning and you're likely to make many mistakes. You want something underneath you to absorb the weight of your body, to help you land on the floor in the event of an epic fail. Now, I know you can use pillows and you can get those large teddy bears and throw them and hope that you land on them, but but really there is nothing as convenient as a crash mat. These are made for pull. They have the Velcro in the right places to attach and, and, and not move while you're practicing. And they also fold into four and they stack up into a nice little big little triangle thing that you can put against a corner and move out of the way. Uh, I highly recommend this. This is my best friend. So if you're a beginner, I recommend those two things, a good, solid, sturdy, reputable pull that can last years and a solid crash mat that can save your ass. So I kept taking my little classes in my studio and then I would go home and I would practice and I started noticing that I was getting better faster. So fast forward a little bit and you see him and I here playing around with some boxes because we started packing our shit because I didn't want to stay in his apartment. It was too far away from my parents and at the time I was kind of still living with my parents and I was going back and forth. So we're like, let's go. Let's move into our own spot. And this was the first time I ever lived with someone else. Oh my God. So we did it. We got ourselves a little place in Hialeah. It was uh, quite cheap compared to other spots, given the area that we were in, but it allowed us to save up. So thumbs up on saving, man. Thumbs up on saving. Here is my husband, still boyfriend at the time, uh, you know, setting up my pole in our new bedroom and taking it for a spin. And uh, here he is just dizzy, dizzy, <laughs> feeling like he has to throw up after just that little spin. I'm telling you, pole is, pole is something. So there began my journey in a new place and I had more space around the pole. Now I was able to dance more on the space. The ceiling still wasn't so high, um, which still sucked. Um, so I was able to practice my, my, my tricks, but I couldn't really do a lot of like static drops and crazy things like that because, you know, I was uh, limited by the height. I'm going to let you in on a little secret that I'm starting to realize now. I think due to my lack of height and my more space around the pole, I think that's what pushed me in the direction of the exotic style a little bit. It's just basically that I didn't have access to the height so I was like bored with practicing those things at home like the tricks on the pole and I was like you know what I'm just gonna work on things on the floor since I had more floor space and I think that I owe my exotic journey uh, to that to my space and my constraints and my limitations go figure limitations can sometimes uh, push us in certain directions and make us grow in, in new ways by the way, if you're watching this and thinking, oh my God, look how cool she looks. I'm not. I'm looking at this and I'm like, holy crap. Wow, I look horrible. Look at my this and my that. <sighs> Over time, you, you, uh, you get better and you look back at yourself and you're like, wow, I've come a long way. So definitely record yourself if you are starting out. It's so nice to look back and see your progress. And check out that long ass blue hair I had. Wow, so pretty. Like a freaking mermaid. So as time went by, I kept practicing and kept learning and trying things and sucking and, and embracing the suck and just going, man, you know, just training here and there. And I had the privacy of my own apartment, um, even though I got to tell you, uh, I didn't have too much privacy, man. I can hear my neighbors talking and uh, it was really annoying to be living in an apartment with loud ass neighbors like the ones I had. And oh, another thing I didn't mention. In this new place, I actually had a mirror, okay? In the first apartment where I would just kind of go back and forth to my, to my boyfriend's house, I didn't really have a mirror set up there and I wasn't able to practice as much as I wanted because I didn't live there. But now that I had my own place, I went and I bought a big ass mirror. Now, I didn't spend a lot of money on this mirror because I knew that this apartment that I was living in was gonna be short term. It was gonna be maybe a year or two in this apartment. I knew that the end game I was getting more and more serious with my husband at the time, a boyfriend at the time. Uh, so I knew that this was going somewhere and you know, we had spoken about getting our own place in the future. So I did not splurge on an expensive big mirror or anything like that. I found one on offer up. Okay. Use offer up, use eBay, anything that you can buy used 
now for a mirror is perfect. If you know that you're setting up in a place that is not going to be long term, don't spend so much money on your setup. Spend money on your pole and your crash mat. But who gives a shit about the mirror? You can use any, any little mirror, even if it's a broken, cracked mirror that you get from a nearby, I don't know, a nearby church that's giving away mirrors or something. Take it. Take it. Put it up. Use it. It's temporary. And it's just something that gives you quick feedback. So here I had my mirror, I was learning my little things, I was practicing, trying to fine tune my skills, and I think I got a lot better now. Now that I had my own space, and at this point in my dancing, I, I, I started to really see an increase in some skill. Tile is fine, okay? I still had tile at this moment. Just dance in your damn socks, okay? Suck it up, suck it up. It's not your permanent place. Don't worry about it, tile is fine. If you're, if you're like, oh, I'm not gonna set up my home pole studio because I have tile, so what? Set it up, dance in your socks, put socks around your shoes, make it happen. One good thing about living on the first floor was that I didn't have any downstairs neighbors to worry about, okay? Sometimes when you're wearing the heels and you're landing and you're switching and you're slithering and clacking and boom, 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 your downstairs neighbors will hate you. I'd n I've never had downstairs neighbors. I was the one on the bottom. I was the one always complaining about the ones upstairs making noise. Um, but being on the first floor also has its cons. Um, like I had a window in my room where I would dance and I had the constant little creepers just kind of like looking in when I would practice. So I would have to close the curtains if I wanted more privacy. And uh, you know, I like training with daylight. It's so nice. So there's pros and cons to being higher up in a, in a higher apartment or on the first floor. Just keep some of those things in mind. So time goes by, my husband and I start flirting with the idea of moving into a house. Mind you, we were just flirting with this idea. It's not like we were like, yeah, we're gonna move into a house, but no, we, we had time until our lease was gonna be up. We had time. We just wanted to start looking around and seeing what the market was like, learning the lingo. It's really good to go out and, and seek either jobs or, or look for homes when you are comfortable. So when you have a job and you're looking for a job, that's the best place to be because you're not desperate, right? When you have an apartment and you know that your lease is not gonna be up for a while, but you start looking around, that's the best place to be because there's no pressure. It's not like you have to find something right away. So that's what we started doing. We started looking around, going to different houses, checking things up. And then one day I get a phone call from my mother telling me that she had a conversation with her next door neighbor. Long story short, her next door neighbor was selling the house. My husband and I went and checked out the house and let me just make a long story short, it was beautiful, it was nicely done inside, it was gonna require not that much work. My husband and I looked at each other, it was right next door to my parents, I mean like right next door to my parents and uh, we get along with my parents quite well. It's not like, uh, <laughs> it's not like we have to be separate, um, we get along quite well. So moving in next door was not a big deal and I moved in, we did it. We bought it and we moved in. So this here is the setup, the way that the previous owners had where my pole studio is now. You can see how the chandelier is so beautiful right up top in the middle of that little entrance. Let's call it an entrance living room type thing. So it's like the entrance living room where nobody ever freaking sits, but hey. And I was able to transform it to this. Sorry for the mess. This was recorded while I was kind of like on a break from work. I was working and uh, I just wanted to take a quick little snippet of what I'm working with today. I love my space. It is so beautiful, so clean. Yes, I have a lot of work to do. There are a lot of things that I need to improve on it, but overall, I'm, this is a dream for me, folks. So as you can see, the entrance of the house is right here. And this is empty. I've left it empty on purpose. I really like the clean look. Oh, look, there's a chandelier. I moved it. <laughs> I really like this clean look. Um, and I love the lighting. I love the lighting that I get from that window and from uh, this, the, the ceiling window as well, the higher window up top. And it's so beautiful when I train during the day. That natural lighting is amazing. Here I keep my little corner crash mat, fold it up, pull it out whenever I need to. I just love this studio, it is the best. Here I keep my shoes, some of my little boots and stuff, and my, my, my leg warmers and whatnot. This is so convenient and it helps keep the clutter out of sight. Here's some of my garters, my notebooks, a little bar. <laughs> 
And over here's my little gym bag and I keep all my little sex toys. I mean, my, uh, <laughs> just kidding. They look like sex toys, but that's actually a peanut. It's for rolling on your body and stuff. So this is what it looks like. So clean, so pretty. And mm, I don't know. Tell me what you think. I, I, know that, I know that everyone wants me to decorate that entrance of the house, but I just love how the videos come out when there's nothing behind me, okay? Like I don't... I would love to put a bookshelf there and some artwork and some chairs, some reading chairs, but I don't know. Another part of me is like this clean look looks so nice and refined. Let me know in the comment box what you think. Should I decorate that entrance and put some stuff in that background or should I just keep it clean like how it is now? Tell me what you think. Interact with me here, please. I really want to know what you think. So the first thing I did was hire a floor guy. I didn't want uh, to put my pole on tile. I didn't want to dance on tile anymore, but I also didn't want to take the tile out. It was be it's beautiful. So what I did is I hired a floor guy who convinced me that it was okay to go ahead and put this floor on top of my tile. And in between, there's like a little spongy material that's slightly absorbent. And it helps with uh, when you're dancing and you land on your knees or you're jumping and you're landing on your ankles, it, it absorbs some of the shock. And so it's easier on the joints, supposedly, and uh, it, it, it's a good thing for dance floors. So I had that put, I had this floor put right above it, and it's been great for me so far. I chose this light gray color because it really went with the colors throughout the entire house. But I gotta tell you, I am a sucker for dark floors. I love how dark brown, dark brown, almost black floors look they're so beautiful i've been to a studio that has the best floor ever it's so pretty it's so dark and it glides beautifully it's a great floor i love dark but i wanted something that was going to also make my space look large given that it's just a little it's not that little but given that it's a, a living room area i wanted it to really look big and more spacious and i know that dark colors sometimes have a tendency of making look of making areas look a little you know less spacious so i went with the same color scheme and I do not regret it one bit. One thing I will tell you about lighter floors is that if you have like nail polish, like especially red, and you're dancing, sometimes the nail polish will rub off to the floor and you'll see it. But that's easy, you just get some uh, water, mild soap, or very little acetone and just wipe it over those spots and it comes right off the floor. There's nothing to worry about. And then there were some little border pieces that he put around the, the floor and just connected them and just gave it like a nice little finish. Okay, another thing I wanna talk about is the, the edges. I don't know what these are called. Are these called floorboards? Jeez, I don't, I don't know what these are called. But um, after we put my floor on top of the tile that was already here, we had to put a new little white layer all along the edge of the floor board. I think it's called a floorboard, right? Well, whatever. And that new little edge went all the way around and it really just finessed the look of the floor. It didn't look like the floor didn't belong. It really tied it in nicely. And then I got on all fours and I painted this whole thing white to keep it nice and pretty because it was like stained and, and ugly and I just painted over it and, and gave it those nice little touches. After I got my floor in place, the next step was my mirror guy. My mirror guy was a jack of all trades. Um, he was able to move my chandelier from where it was to now in front of the door. So you see now I moved the chandelier out of the way, put it back there and my pole took the chandelier's place. And then I got my mirror and my mirror, <laughs> here's a little secret. My mirror is shoved into my wall because whoever constructed this house uh, was not very much of a perfectionist and the house is basically slanted, okay? Like, yes, I have a slanted ceiling, but the house itself, like where it's supposed to be straight, where the edges, where the walls meet, where it's supposed to be straight, it's not that straight. And I hadn't realized that until my mirror guy pointed it out to me and he's like, yo, I'm gonna have to shove this thing into the wall if you want it to look, uh, decent and I said well do what you got to do at this point 
I was like just dying to just get the mirrors on. I didn't want him to have to go back and recut the mirror. And to be honest with you, I'm glad that I didn't because I love my large mirrors from wall to wall. And when I step back and I show you the studio, you can't even tell. You can't even tell that that's what's happened to that right side of the where the mirror meets the wall. You can't tell. Now you know because I showed you, but you really cannot tell. All right, let's take a look at what I did with my pole here. I am going to enlighten all of you who have a slanted ceiling. So another reason why I love my X pole and why I'm so happy that that was the pole that I bought from the beginning because I didn't have to buy a pole ever again is because X pole has the ball and socket joint that connects to your pole in the event of a slanted ceiling mount. Okay. This mount is amazing. And like I said, it works like a little ball and socket. And what you see between my mount and my ceiling is wood. It's actually wood that my mirror guy, he, I asked him, hey, can you please get me a piece of wood? I wanna put a nice piece of wood between the pole and the ceiling so that it looks kind of more refined, more finished, prettier. And he went and he brought me this thing and I painted it white, the same white as the ceiling and we used it in between the mount and the ceiling and it looks great. It looks so pretty and I love it. If you wanna know how I mounted my pole, I'm going to include in the description box below a link to a video that I basically used to put my pole up. It, show, it talks about how to get the wood to match the ceiling. It talks about how to cut the wood. It talks about how to put the nails in the right places, how to drill, everything you need to know for a slanted ceiling and how to make it look like this. I literally just copied that video and those women saved me because I had no idea how I was going to set this up. And when I found that video, it was gold. So check it out. Are you liking this video? Would you please give me a subscribe and a like because I went through some hard ass work putting this together for you, you know? And another reason why I love x -Pole is because of the base, okay? It's such a narrow base. Like that little circle is so small. Sometimes you go to pole studios and they have like this really big black base around uh, the bottom and sometimes your heels get stuck on it when you want to do certain tricks like it's annoying um, i love how narrow the base of this pole is it really is a plus for me and now that i'm in my new pole studio i really love how much space i have all around the pole as well as away from the mirror um, Please, that is one thing you really want to keep in mind. You need a lot of damn space between you and that mirror. You do not want to fly into that thing. But nowadays, I don't even worry. Even with my long ass uh, heels on, I do not have any chance of running into that mirror. Safety first. One thing I want to tell you about the mirror is that I glued mine. Now that I knew that I was going to be in a more permanent setting, I said, go for it. Glue it to the damn wall. Make sure that if I ever hit this thing for whatever reason, which I shouldn't because now I have so much room around this damn pole, let me tell you. Um, but if I ever hit that mirror for whatever reason, let's say I'm working on headstands, whatever, nothing will happen. It'll just crack. The mirror will just crack. It will not come off the wall. Pieces will not fly at me. It should stay quite intact because the glue that we used was some real shit. So that's basically it for the main things in my pole studio. What am I working on now? Now I'm working on my sound system. Um, I still have this old school sound system that's been with me for years, but it sounds so amazing with the subwoofer and everything. I don't know whether to keep this sound bar and put it above this window or if I should just kind of invest soon in some uh, like Bluetooth speakers that I can put in those corners. I'm not sure yet. I'm, I'm thinking about that. And another thing I want to maybe start investing in or looking at is uh, lighting. I mean, I know that I usually train during the day and I love the natural light that I get, but at night, um, uh, you could argue that there isn't enough lighting. Although I use the, the, the lights underneath my little uh, opening here. The, these lights are so cute and so nice and they're not all on my face when I'm training at night. But I do realize that I, I could get some little neon lights. I could get some little neon lights. I could get some little neon lights. I don't know. I'm thinking about it. Um, but yeah, it's a work in progress. Okay. Before you go, there's one more thing I kind of want to talk about. And it's a little bit of a dilemma that I'm dealing with now, but it's good that you learn from me. If you move into your own uh, home and you decide that this is something a little bit more permanent that you're going to set up, please fumigate before you start remodeling your pole dance studio. I remodeled my, my little area over here and then a few months later now I am 
kind of dealing with some ant issues. Uh, here it rains a lot and these ants just have been coming through this window. I need to get this window resealed uh, nicer so that these little bugs don't get in. But I did fumigate uh, last week. And let me tell you, after we had a, an amazing fumigator come, uh, these ants have been dying, but dying by the, by the thousands, okay? I've had to come every morning and this is nothing. What you see here is like, after I cleaned a few minutes later, this is them, um, you know, dying and showing up and whatnot. But it's been like a freaking ant graveyard. So if you're going to set up your own place, please fumigate before. Fumigate, let sh all that shit die. Fumigate, seal your window first, and then set up your place inside. Because in hindsight now, dealing with this ant issue is such a pain in the butt. But I will overcome these ants, let me tell you. I will. If you like my little studio setup, give me a subscribe and a thumbs up and uh, talk to me. Give me a little comment. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what you think I can fix or work on. I'm really not an interior designer and I could really use some help.